Hi, we had some great comments after the previous video about these LED strips that I potted in some glow-in-the-dark resin. And one of the questions was from Mike from Mike's Electric Stuff, and that is, after potting white LEDs in some resin, have I noticed that the colour temperature shifts? And I thought we'd investigate that today. I can't quite test with this mixture because we do get a very slight green hint to the spectrum uh, because it actually makes it glow um, as it is illuminated with light you do see this slight green tint to the light that comes off it uh, but what I thought we'd do is with these PCBs that we had made at PCB way in this panel I 3d printed three more uh, molds in black this time uh, rather than the clear that we've got here and what we'll do is we'll glue one PCB into the first mold and then we'll try potting two more PCBs in two of these other molds. And along with this ultra water clear resin that I used in this PCB, uh, I've also got some more standard resin that we're going to try using. This one's still clear resin, uh, but it's not sold as optically clear. So we can try out these two. Now, I don't have the ability to work out the colour temperature, but what we can do is use the spectrometer and have a look at what the colour spectrum actually looks like. So we'll have sort of one control where we can see what the light coming from one of these LEDs looks like, and then we can do a test with two different types of resin and see if the peaks have changed, because we'll probably see from these LEDs uh, a blue peak, and then somewhere around the yellowy-green region we'll start to see another peak, and perhaps what will happen is we'll see a shift of that peak to make the uh, colour temperature of these warm white LEDs appear a little bit colder. So PCB Way are the sponsor for this video and they did supply the PCBs for the project and you did see how high quality and professional those PCBs look. Now one nice feature about the PCB Way website is the ability for authors to upload their projects to the website and then through the link which I've included in the description if you did wish to order these LED strips in the panel you can do, you can add them to your cart and then customise the PCB to your needs. So if you wanted a different colour or you wanted the Enig plating, for example, you can do that and customise the PCB exactly as you would do if you had uploaded the Gerbers yourself. And also, a lot of other people have shared their projects on there, so if there's something that takes your fancy or a project that you want to try, then also you can add those to your cart. So don't forget to visit the PCB website in the links down below. All right, so we're just drawing down a vacuum again. And the key here is to make sure that you don't mix the resin with too much hardener because you do want to allow about 10 or 20 minutes in the chamber to get rid of all of the bubbles. So these resins have now cured. First of all, we've got one PCB without any resin in whatsoever. It's just glued into the bottom of the 3D printed part. And then we have the two different types of resin, but these look visually very, very similar. I can't tell the difference between them. Uh, but first of all, you can see, again, that vacuum chamber really got rid of any of the bubbles. It's very, very clear and really looks quite professional. Uh, but one thing that is quite obvious by eye, these are warm white LEDs. And if you take a look at the color of the phosphor, we've got that very traditional deep orangey colour for the phosphor because there's a lot more of the phosphor in there that fluoresces towards the red end of the spectrum. However, if you take a look at these ones, they're exactly the same LEDs but are encased in resin. These look really pale and that's what you'd normally get with the cooler colour temperatures. So it does look like somehow the resin is interacting with the phosphor on these LEDs. So let's power them up and see if we can see any difference. We've also got the, the one with the glow-in-the-dark um, resin here as well. So let's power these up. These are now running at about 30 milliamps or so, so quite a low current. And first of all, the warm white is looking very nice and warm white, exactly as you'd expect. But there is quite a significant difference between these and the ones that are encased in resin. There's probably 
at least a thousand Kelvin color shift, quite a significant amount. Now, interestingly, if you take a look, this one is a quite a lot warmer white than these ones. And I did actually end up somehow pouring the resin a little bit thinner in this area. You can see it going down just in this area here. So it would appear that the depth of resin shifts the color temperature. So yeah, it's quite weird. We've got quite a cool white hair going towards this warmer white, but not quite as warm as these ones with no resin whatsoever. And then the one with the glow in the dark pigment, um, certainly not cooler, but it's got sort of a little green hue to it, probably because uh, the glow in the dark powder is actually fluorescing. So what I'm gonna do is I'll get the spectrometer and what I'll probably do is shine these onto a piece of white paper and then have the optic fibre pointing at the paper so we get uh, quite a good reading overall of what the spectrum is coming off these LEDs. And here's just another illustration. We've got some white paper here. We've got the one with the resin here and the one without. And there is really quite a significant difference, as you can see. It looks really, really cool white here and nice and warm white on the left. So first of all, we have our output from our bare LEDs. Now, because these are blue LED dyes with a phosphor coating, these all have a peak at about 450 nanometers. So that's sort of the base output from the blue LED emitter. And then the phosphor is basically what dictates the color temperature. And because these are very warm white, there's a lot of phosphor in the 600 nanometer region that gives us this large peak over here. And that's what makes it appear very warm white. So this is exactly as we'd expect. Then we have our two LEDs coated in resin in orange and blue. And basically what we can see is that there is a little bit of a decrease in light output at the 450 nanometer region, but there is a significant difference in the orangey red region up here near 600 nanometers. So although there is to be expected some decrease in general light output based on the thickness of the resin, it would appear that the resin itself has a huge amount of absorbance in this 600 nanometer region, which is why we see that very big shift in color temperature, because basically it's stealing a lot of the light in that orangey red region. Then what we have in green is the output from the LEDs that are encased in the resin combined with the glow in the dark pigment. Now this one's quite interesting because the resin itself was poured a little bit thinner, which explains why we see a little bit more light in this region here. But more interestingly, what we're seeing is quite a significant decrease in the amount of light at the 450 nanometers region. And that's because the glow in the dark pigment is actually absorbing the light in that region and then refluorescing in the sort of 500 to 520 nanometer region. So this light green peak over here is the spectrograph of just the glow in the dark pigment glowing with no LEDs on. And what we can see is we've got quite a lot of light, quite wide band centered around 520 nanometers, which is why we get that nice green color. But it's not a pure green, it's spread out quite wide, which is why we get quite a lot of usable light from this glow in the dark pigment. But basically when the LEDs are on, that pigment is stealing the light in the 450 nanometer region because it is excited by close to UV light. Now I did manage to find a data sheet from Electrolube about their various coatings that you can apply to LEDs. So firstly, as expected, the thickness of the coating affects firstly the absorbance, but also the shift in color temperature. Uh, but then also it does look like no matter what you apply to these LEDs, there is going to be a shift in color temperature. It seems that all of these resins seem to have some absorbance in that orangey red region that basically results in an increase in color temperature after you apply that conformal coating. So some interesting results there, and I think what we can learn from that is if you do need to encapsulate your LEDs either for waterproofing or to reduce the amount of dust getting onto your PCB or just to increase the toughness of your PCB, then you should try and keep the thickness of the resin as thin as possible because firstly, the resin is not 100% optically clear and what that means is that it is going to absorb some of the light from the LEDs and decrease the efficiency of your LED application but also the thicker the application of resin the more we're going to see a color shift towards the cooler color temperatures which in most cases is probably going to be undesirable so you do want to keep them as thin as possible possibly what you might want to do is just coat the PCB up to the level of the top of the LED so that you don't actually cover the top of the LED and that should maintain the waterproofing 
but it won't affect the colour temperature at all. And then secondly, if you are thinking about adding something like some glow-in-the-dark pigment, be aware that in order to operate it is absorbing some light in the 450 nanometer region, and basically you're going to re remove some of the blue light from these LEDs in order for that glow-in-the-dark pigment to work. So an interesting question. Thanks, Mike, for asking it in the comments. A big thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video, and if you've got any more thoughts or any additional questions, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters, and until next time, thanks for watching.